Hey everybody, this video is going to be an introduction uh, to the differences between epidural and spinal anesthesia. Um, spinal anesthesia can also be called intrathecal anesthesia. So if you ever heard of someone say, I got an intrathecal, they, they're saying that they got a, a spinal injection. Um, but, you know, these two types of anesthesia are very common. A lot of people have heard of them. Uh, you know, you, you hear about epidurals, especially um, during childbirth. You hear about a lot of women choosing or um, going for an epidural catheter uh, being placed and then giving them some analgesia while they're going through that painful process of childbirth. Um, spinals are becoming much more popular now because you can do actually major surgeries like total knee replacements using just spinal blocks and um, you know sedation rather than having to put the patient totally under. And that really lowers your post-op complications like atelectasis and uh, you know problems like that that are usually caused by anesthesia. Um, but just, you know, if you're watching this video just to, for a quick, the differences between the two, um, we'll go through the quick differences and I'll kind of explain why there are differences. So tune in for as long as, as you're interested or as long as you need to, to get your questions answered. But spinal anesthesia um, involves the injection. Usually it's a one-time thing. Like we're just sticking a needle in, shooting a drug and taking it back out. It's a one-time thing where we inject uh, drugs right around the spinal column. I mean, into the space directly around those upper motor neurons. And that has an almost, you know, instantaneous or very quick onset, less than five minutes. Some people might even say less than a minute because you're essentially putting those drugs as close as you can to the spinal cord without being actually inside or penetrating them, those motor neurons, upper motor neurons. So you are, um, you know, shooting a drug right next to the spinal cord, thus causing a very quick onset um, and it also, because you're right next to that, it doesn't have, the drug doesn't have to diffuse to hit those upper motor neurons, you get a muscle block. So when you get a spinal anesthesia, like if you're having a knee replacement, that drug is going to make it so that you cannot move your leg muscles. And that's good because the surgeon doesn't want your leg muscles moving when he's replacing your knee joint. Um, another interesting thing about the spinal anesthesia is that you cannot inject it, or you should not inject it above the L2, L3 region. And we'll go into the anatomic reason for why that is, um, but that's, that's one difference. Whereas an epidural, you can give anywhere along the, the spinal column, theoretically, if you want to. Um, because you're giving it right into that uh, area, right around the spinal cord, you can use a smaller dose of drugs. And again, you only usually give one, one shot of drugs. Now let's talk about epidurals. Epidurals we actually put into the epidural space, which is like two membranes away from the actual spinal cord. So that drug has to diffuse through some tissue to get to, you know, the, the surrounding nerves or even to the spinal cord. And that gives it a longer onset. So it takes like a half hour for that epidural early to be running at, you know, full strength. Whereas the spine, like I said earlier, was is like less than five minutes. Um, epidurals don't typically give you full muscular blocks. They don't actually hit the motor neurons that hard because of that diffusion they have to do. It's like, you know, if you are have if you're undergoing childbirth and you have an epidural, you might not be feeling a lot of pain, but you probably can still move your legs a little bit, reposition yourself if you have to. Obviously, this varies by person to person. Um, like I said earlier, epidurals can be given anywhere along the vertebral column, whereas spinals can't. And uh, epidurals. Um, they usually leave a catheter, or a, which is a small like plastic tube, in the space. So once they find it and they hit it, they actually leave a tube in there, and then they can continuously pump drugs into that space over time. So, you know, as many of you know, uh, labor and delivery is not exactly like a 30-minute process. You you do it and then you're done. It can take you know, up to a day to um, or longer to be in labor and be in that pain. So they want to leave that catheter in space. So every few hours, they don't have to keep on sticking you with a needle in your back, especially when you're um, you know, trying to push out a baby. Okay, so why do all those... Now that we've talked about that and just kind of rattled down the differences, you know, spinal being quicker and just a one-time thing, epidural being longer and... Um, you know, leaving the catheter. Why, why do all those differences exist? And let's start with a brief review of the spinal anatomy here. So you have a vertebral column. You know, this can be anywhere along the column. Um, let's, you know, in the thoracics, let's say. You have your vertebral bodies, those intervertebral discs, spinous processes, transverse processes. That spinal cord runs kind of back here behind those bodies in that um, central foramen. And uh, this green line here actually denotes the skin, right? So like, let's say this is on your back. 
these spinous processes are those bumps that you feel, right? So run your hand along your back, you feel your backbone. When you feel that, you're actually feeling these spinous processes, nothing else. So we have to go deeper to those to get to that spinal cord. And, um, you know, another thing I said earlier is that you, it, with uh, spinals, you only want to go below the L2, L3 region. Let's talk a little bit about anatomy for why that is. And that's because the spinal cord, it runs down, but it actually ends around the L2, L3 region. So here we have a transection sagittal view. We kind of cut this view here in half, and then we took out some of the extraneous parts and put it over here. So we have L2, L3, L4, L5. Um, around that L2, L3 region, it, get, it depends on the person, you have this blue cone. And this really is the end of the spinal cord, right? Like the spinal cord runs up the back here in its full way. But then when it gets down here, it turns into a cone. It's called the conus medullaris. And that's really just the end or you know, like the tail of the spinal cord. And coming off this tail, you see these blue lines. Those are all the neurons coming off there. They call it the cauda equina or the horse's tail because it kind of looks like a horse's tail with all these strands. So if you are below the L2, L3 region, um, you know, and you introduce a needle into this, into this central spinal cavity here, spinal foramen, um, that needle is just going to push aside those neurons and you're not going to be worried about piercing um, that actual, the spinal cord itself. And that's why with spinals, which like we said earlier, we are actually going to introduce an injection right as close as we can to that central cavity. Um, you know, that, that's why you can only do it below here because you don't want to risk actually puncturing the spinal cord or hurting those upper motor neurons. So spinals, you have to do it lower. Epidural, since you're not going quite as close, you can do it any region. Uh, let's, let's talk about that. What, what do these mean? Like when I say those regions or the spaces, the membranes, let's talk about what I mean by that. Um, this won't be to scale, you know, by any means. And it won't be very anatomical, but this is the spinal cord, right? So these are upper motor neurons running from you know, your brain stem, your brain running all the way down in what's known as a spinal cord, right? A cord. A lot of different animals have them. It's really one, a part of the central nervous system. Now we have our first layer around that. And this is, you know, again, not to scale, but we have a layer of tissue or a membrane around the spinal cord. And that's called the arachnoid matter. Okay? Um, now the arachnoid matter uh, is, is a membrane. And just, you know, think about your Latin. You have below that membrane space, which would be like deep to it here, and you have above it. Now this below it would be called subarachnoid space. I'm right, sub A, subarachnoid space. You could call this area around it an epiarachnoid space, but just um, by convention, typically we don't do that. But so we have the arachnoid matter, subarachnoid space, and the spinal cord. Now there's another layer here of tissue and this is called the dura matter, DM. Now, some of you, you know, the wheels are probably turning. You get it. There's a subarachnoid space. There would be a subdural space. And there would also be an epidural space. I'm going to write epidural or epid. Arachnoid matter, dura matter. Subarachnoid space, epidural space. And now you're already guessing. You know, what? well, just think about the names. We have an epidural. That is when our cannula or our injection is going to end outside the dural space. Or outside the dural membrane in the epidural space right here. So this is an epidural. That's where your cannula would go. And then our spinal, you could call like an intrathecal or a subarachnoid injection. You're actually going to stick that needle all the way in through the dura matter, through the arachnoid matter, into that subarachnoid space. And that's called a... Spinal. And now you can see, you know, just because of where we're actually putting those needles or those injections, you can see why a spinal or an intrathecal actually has a much uh, faster onset and a much stronger block because, hey, we are putting that drug in the subarachnoid space right next to that spinal column. I mean, we are essentially dowsing the spinal cord with a uh, drug, whereas with an epidural in the epidural space, which is outside of the dural membrane and the arachnoid membrane, you know, it has to diffuse through these two layers to hit the spinal cord or has to diffuse out to get to the surrounding tissues. And that is why it's not near as strong or not as near as quick of an onset. Um, and it's not as strong of a block. Uh, let's see that that pretty much, you know, talks about the, the differences between the two and the reasons why anatomically, um, as far as how these are done, you're going to have, 
a needle. And in both cases, you're gonna have a needle and usually you, you know, you use some local anesthetic which you, to numb up the area before you introduce a large needle. So we numb up the area. I'll maybe draw this out a little bit. So let's say we're looking at someone's back, right? And let's say we're gonna do an epidural and a spinal in the same person for some reason, which you, you never do. Um, you know, this is the back. Here we see those little bumps like we talked about earlier, those spinous processes, right? So that's this, actually we turned it 90 degrees and now we're looking at the person's back. Um, and let's say that, you know, since we're gonna be doing a spinal, we wanna be in the L3, L4 range. And we're gonna introduce local, so like a, a small needle, 22 gauge needle, something like that, to put some local anesthetic so that it numbs up the area. Put in a, uh, an introduced needle in, and then we're gonna start uh, pushing through like a 45 degree angle, kind of like this is, because you see these spinous processes are kind of tilted down. So we have to thread our needle through that gap. And sometimes these gaps are very, very, very tight. Um, a lot of people use the landmark of the person's belly button or umbilicus, umbilicus in the front to guide where their needle should be pointing towards. So although you're starting lower than it, you want to aim it up towards that. We go in there and, you know, it's kind of one of those things you have to learn um, as you go through, but you feel these, the, these series of pops, like popping or giving way of the tissues as you push this needle in. So you're pushing this needle and all of a sudden you feel like give away or pops. And there's different layers like the ligamentum flavum and uh, you know, the, the, the dural matter that you're going through to with each one of those successive giveaways to get into the subsequent layers. Um, yeah, w without uh, too much more introduction, that, that is the differences from that, the longer lasting epidural versus the short, quick, powerful spinal um, epidurals, most commonly used for childbirth anesthesia, spinals most commonly used uh, these days for total joint replacements. Uh, yeah. That's the differences. Thanks.